All right, today we're doing Unity, and I got three machines here, all 16-inch MacBook Pros. This is the M1 Max, M2 Pro, and the M2 Max. Now, they have slightly different configurations. These two are 64 gig machines, 32 core of a GPU, 38 cores of GPU. This one is a little bit different. It is a nice developer machine, but we'll see if it can handle Unity because it only has 16 gigs of RAM and a 19 core GPU. I'm gonna get my handy timer out, and we're gonna start uh, timing stuff. I wish I had a different timer than this. First is gonna be project creation. Yeah, we're gonna start like that. And a couple of you have some requests for me. These are things I haven't done in my previous Unity tests that you wanted to see this time around. One is when you're actually running a project and you make a change in your code, see how long that takes to update. And two is an HDRP project. We'll see how quickly or not quickly that runs. Let's start with this 3D core. I'm gonna call this project AZ3D and let's go. All right, that was 18 seconds. AZ3D on the M2 Pro. Oh, 19 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Finally that one. Oh, 18 seconds. You're dealing with really powerful machines here. Uh, you might save a thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars between these two, for example. Is it worth saving that money? Uh, that's what we're trying to answer here. And if you run these tests on your own machine, and if we're getting significantly faster numbers here, and you're actively developing and making money with Unity, maybe it's worth an upgrade. I don't know. It's up to you. All right, so we've got a 3D project here. I'm gonna go ahead and run it. Let's go. Well, that took no time at all actually um <laughs> and this one yeah but why am i doing this well i want to have a look at the basic project see what kind of uh, frames per second we're getting just out of the box let's go yeah so it takes like one second to build let's have a look at these fps's wow now there is an interesting difference and something i would not have expected so we're getting about that is it seven to nine hundred fps yeah around there on the m2 pro we're getting lower on the m2 max Max, which is interesting. We're getting about 600 there and we're getting 1400 on the M1 Max. So let's just have a little peek at the GPU here. Yeah, the GPU is kicking quite a bit. The utilization is up to 100% or almost 100% on all three of these. But of course, this being a machine with less memory, there's going to be more memory pressure going on here. 38%. Well, this one is 36%. Also pretty high on that one. But this one is 26. Okay, let's go back here. Maybe it just needed some time to warm up. Now we're at 1400 FPS on the M1 Max. We're at 1900 to 2000 on the M2 Pro. And we're about 1900 to 2000 on the M2 Max. That's kind of what I would have expected. Now, just to keep things a little bit consistent with my previous tests, I wanna import a 3D test into this one, a 3D game. So let's go to package manager here and then my assets. And I'm gonna do this 3D game kit right here. So I'm gonna import that. I guess it's already downloaded. No, it's, it can't be downloaded. It. I'm gonna re-download it. I'm not gonna time to download because, well, that's using the network and that's gonna take up some resources. So I'll be back after it downloads. Let's import this. I'm gonna hit import on all three of these. And I get the warning, of course, about uh, overwriting. Let's overwrite, that's fine. So far, I'm not noticing any slowdowns in any one of these. And we get another warning saying we gotta upgrade. So let's do that. Typical Unity stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> lots of questions, lots of answers. Okay, here we go. This is, uh, it's doing something right now. Oh, well that process was actually faster on the two new machines, much faster, visibly faster. Okay, this is the one I wanna time because this is the actual import into the project and let's go. There was another question, so I have to restart my timer from that question. This is quite a process. Now I'm not a game developer and I don't use Unity. This is just from what I've learned by doing these tests and talking to you folks. So <laughs> I gotta say, you folks have a lot of patience, you Unity people. And you probably need these machines right here. These were made for people like you because yeah, you need the powerhouse. This thing right here, the M1 Max is going up. The fans are not on yet, but it's up to 71 degrees, just importing. Everybody who's not a Unity developer, write a comment down below. Much respect to Unity developers. <laughs> for putting up with this. Wow. I mean, I don't know how it is with Unreal. It might be the same way with Unreal. I haven't tried that one yet. Holy cow. Import the internet. <laughs> okay. We've got a number here. Two minutes and 50 seconds. That's the number to beat. Let's check these folks over here. Better. Two minutes and 33 seconds on the M2 Pro. One more to do. It's one of those things that happens. We're just past the time now of the M2 Pro on the M2 Max. And somehow on the last import statement, we just got a beach ball. 
We've just blown past the time. It's a beach ball and it's just sitting there. One out of three. Unity people, respect. I can't get you a time on this one because I'm gonna have to restart this program now. It's, it's stuck, but I'm keeping this in the video because well, these are realistic scenarios here. This is what I go through. It's a brand new install, right? I installed this, I create a new project, I imported some packages into it, and this is what happens. And this is one out of three. I think this happened to me quite often before as well, during my testing on other machines and so on. So yeah, we're gonna keep this in there for the sake of documentation. All right, I've rebooted it, but I might as well close all these projects and restart them to see how long it takes to start an existing project. And I have a feeling these are all going to be pretty much the same. So let's go. 6.7 seconds for this one, M1 Max. 6.11 seconds for the M2 Pro. 5.49 seconds. Let's open up our game kit. I wanted to show you the uh, build settings here. This is the default. And I'm targeting Mac OS with the uh, Intel 64 plus Apple Silicon. So kind of like a universal package. And I'm going to do a clean build over here. Let's go. Oh, a question. Um, of course. <laughs> no, I knew this was coming. This was a... Uh, this was just a joke. So when I hit save, that should start building it. Let's go. Six minutes and six seconds? Nobody told me this. Not one of you left a comment said, don't clean rebuild this project that is gonna take forever to do. Come on, people, you gotta warn me about these things. Now I gotta do this one and this one. All right, here we go. But I will be curious to see if these machines can beat that time, because that's a long build. All right, you're not gonna believe this. Well, you might believe this. But now this machine froze. The M2 Pro froze during the build. Uh, but this one finished. The M2 Max actually got a slower time than the M1 Max. Not by much, uh, six minutes and 20 seconds. Now I'm gonna restart all these because I want it to be fair. And then we're gonna take a look at the frames per second we're getting. Here's the game. Let's have a look at the stats while this is on. And I'm gonna turn the volume down a bit. We're getting quite a bit more frames per second on the two new machines. M1 Max is hovering about about uh, 170 to 200 frames per second on the starting screen. And these two are actually doing pretty well. 330 to 350 frames per second. Let's start the game, see what goes on. I'll start with this uh, M2 Pro. Let's uh, walk around a little bit, keep an eye on that FPS. Just by walking around, does it feel choppy? Nope, it does not feel choppy. It feels very nice and smooth. Pretty good, pretty good. Oh, did I die? No, I didn't. I didn't die yet, but I will pretty soon probably. Yeah, we're getting about 120, 130 frames per second. Very smooth. Okay, let's check out the M1 Max. There was a little initial starter, but now it's okay. I guess I can't go that way, all right? Yeah, when I turn, there's a little bit of a stutter when it has to render the entire scene, but then it goes back to normal. Getting about the same FPS, maybe a little higher actually, and also a little lower. So it's, it's kind of a bigger range, I guess. Ooh, I'm hearing some noises. Who is that? Well, the noise I'm hearing is from the M2 Max. The fan is spinning at 3300 RPM, 3400 RPM. All of these machines are hot now. They're at 92 degrees, all three of these, but these two are about 1500 RPM. The M2 Max is really spinning up here. 4000 RPM on the M2 Max, wow. Okay, let's play this and see what happens. Ooh, that initial stutter was pretty bad on this one. Okay, wow. All right, very smooth graphics so far, except for that initial stutter. We're getting about, um, 120 to 150 FPS, but it's loud. You can probably hear that now. It sounds like an Intel machine. What happened? Holy cow. Okay, wow. I've never seen the fans go this fast doing something organically. I've always had to max out the fans manually using TG Pro to get them to spin above 5,000 RPM. This is this is probably the highest I've ever seen the fans just spin. 5,300 RPM. You can hear that. Wow. But on the plus side, the temperature is now a nice 77 degrees. Whereas these two are still pretty high in the 90s. And I haven't died yet, so that's pretty good. Oh, there we go. I died. Moving on. I've rebooted all the machines. We're... At about 1500 RPM for all three of these. The next project I'm gonna create is this 3D HDRP project. Let's create one of those because we're gonna import a pretty large asset in here as well and run that. You see what I have to put up with to do these tests? This thing crashed one more time while I was creating the project. All right, folks, hit the thumb to show you appreciate this video. Oh, and you can also subscribe to the channel. It's right there, right, right there. Moving on, here's our new HDRP project. I need some assets in here, so I'm gonna go and grab them. Package manager and my assets. Let's grab this one right here, the Unity Terrain. Now I've already downloaded it, so I'm gonna just import it. 
All right, now let's time the import here. This is a pretty, another pretty large one for the import. And uh, Usama asked for this particular type of demo. I didn't even know that there was an HDRP thing in here. So it's a good one to add to the test. All right, let's go. And if you have any other suggestions uh, for future tests, Leave your comments down below. M1 Max finishes at one minute and 25 seconds for the import. Also, I've realized something about my previous build and I've actually started the clock one minute after on this M2 Max. So the M2 Max finishes at five minutes and 20 seconds faster than the M1 Max. DR import and the HDRP import takes one minute and 17 seconds on the M2 Pro. Okay, we have a winner, the M2 Max. One minute, 14 seconds, very good. And that was probably the first thing that happened today that was not with a hiccup. <laughs> All right, let's open up the terrain scene here. Under scenes, terrain demo, let's pop that open. Scenes have been modified, don't save, that's fine. Okay, how's the usability here? Now, the usability I've noticed is really choppy. With this HDRP uh, project, moving the editor back and forth is just, it's choppy, I'm losing it. It's not smooth anymore. Definitely something going on there. And if we take a look at the GPU usage here, we are using quite a bit. It's not maxing out though, so um, yeah. It's doing a lot of drawing of that scene, but not maxing it out, but yet it's affecting the usability of the actual editor. I do have that message at the bottom. The progressive CPU light mapper is not supported in Apple Silicon. Switching to the progressive GPU light mapper. Not sure what that means, but maybe some of you know what that means. It does not look like a friendly message, but maybe it's a good thing. Maybe we want to use the GPU of Apple Silicon to offload some of the work here. How's the editor over here? It's still choppy. It's choppy on the M1 Max, on the M2 Pro, and it's a little bit better over here on the M2 Max. Now, also, I have one instance of Visual Studio Code open and I also have one browser tab open in Chrome just so you know I wanted to do that because some of you requested to you know to have a some browser open this is not a typical way I would work though I would usually have 30 or 40 tabs open but at least it's something let's go ahead and play this well um, we have some initial choppiness on all three of them but it's looking okay now it's looking smooth let's open up the stats here we can observe the frames per second what's going on here oh Pretty low FPS compared to the other game. And even the clarity of the image is not that great. It's all very pixelated. I don't know if you can see that, probably through all the video compression that's going on, you probably can't tell, but I can tell. The image is not really clear and it's not super high res. And the FPS is pretty low. We've got 70 FPS on the M1 Max. Hold on, it's changing because we got a new scene now. 83, 67, 102. Wow, the M2 Max is doing pretty well here the m1 max is doing okay and the m2 pro not as well it's dipping under 60 significantly under 60 in this scene right here we've got 33 fps on the m2 pro here we're consistently below 60. now if we go to maximize screen here we're below 60 on all three of these and the picture is not even crystal clear it's okay but i can tell that it's a fake image and i can see the pixels i guess there's definitely a lot of things going on in this scene but we're consistently consistently below 60 on all three of these machines. This one is actually, the M2 Max is almost at 60, but this M2 Pro is pretty bad, under 30. Definitely see the choppiness there. And I'm starting to hear those fans. All right, let's stop this before it gets crazy. Now, the next thing I wanna do is go over to scripts and I wanna change a piece of code to see how long it takes to uh, get rid of that loading sign. This was something actually requested by Avocavo. He says that this is something pretty commonly done is you change a bit of code and you wait for to restart. Here's a piece of C sharp code um, that I can change. Uh, let's set this to true. And all right, starting now. Okay. There we go. That was a few seconds, but it gives you some idea. Let's change that to true. Let's go. All right. Uh, I'm not sure if that's slow or not. It, it seems like they're about the same. And I don't have a very crystal clear way of timing it either. It's just too small a number. Yeah, it's a couple of seconds, you know. Doing this several hundred times a day though could really add up, of course, I understand that. Save that one. All right, they all seem like they did it at about the same time. It takes just a couple of seconds. 
So any one of these is fine for that. Of course, you're comparing it to your own machines that uh, could take much longer or much faster, depending on what you're using. Let's uh, play that scene one more time. Let's do a code edit while that's playing. So I'm gonna set this to false. There we go. And there's that one. And one more. And there's that loading indicator. So yeah, actually it seems like it was a little bit longer than the M2 Max, but it's they're all very close. Oh, we're in a static shot right now in this game or the simulation. And this is a, a pretty good comparison right here of the FPS we get using the same scene the same shot. So we've got 71.7 or so on the M1 Max. We've got 43.5 on the M2 Pro and about 85 to 86 over here on the M2 Max. So that's Unity. Hopefully that was helpful to you in making your decision and comparing it to your own machines. I do see a pretty big difference between the M2 Pro machine and the Max machines in this case. Of course, the M2 Max really beats out the M1, but not by huge margin. Now, I also did test the Max Studio with the M1 Ultra chip using some of these tests for Unity. So check those videos out if you haven't seen it. Uh, give this video a like if you enjoy this kind of content and consider subscribing to see more of it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.